hello good morning students today we will going to focus on our next chapter that is chapter number 4 heat transfer in the field of pharmacy various operations or the methods are applied for removing heat as well as for preventing heat dissipation so to undergo the process of evaporation in a solution its temperature is elevated by applying heat and uh, it is also essential to absorb heat from saturated solutions to render the solution as super saturated which will results in the crystallization so the objective of this chapter is basically this uh, heat transfer is a unit operation in which the thermal energy is transferred in the form of heat the heat transmission laws are considered important while designing and operating the different forms of steam generators furnaces preheaters exchangers coolers evaporators and condensers in the industries so the objective uh, of this chapter is to obtain the maximum heat transfer rate per unit surface compatible with the economic factors second objective will be it saves the heat as in exchangers recuperate uh, recuperators and regenerators third objective will be it also minimizes the heat flux with the aid of insulation okay so we will going to focus on the heat transfer as a chapter in detail so this is the agenda of my today's presentation wherein we will going to cover the mechanism part fourier's law fill uh, film coefficient uh, stefan boltzmann law tubular heaters or the heat exchangers and heat interchangers too so first of all we should know what actually the heat is heat is a form of energy according to the principle of the thermodynamics whenever a physical or chemical transformation occurs heat flow into or leaves the system so a number of sources of heat are used for industrial scale operations steam and electric power is the chief sources to transfer heat it is essential to cover steam without any losses to the apparatus in which it is used the study of heat transfer processes helps in the signing the plant efficiently and economically so actually the heat transfer what actually the meaning of that transfer of heat so work is one of the basic modes of energy transferred in machines the action of force on a moving body is identified as work so the work is done by a force as it acts upon a body moving in the direction of the force work transferred is considered as occurring between the system and the surroundings work is said to be done by a system is the soul effect on things external to the system and can be reduced to the raising of a weight if you could able to understand this diagram it reflects all about the mechanism part of heat transfer so if you could able to see the diagram then in first diagram of your left hand side it represents or assign that the beaker of water that has been kept over the stand of uh, a beaker stand or uh, with the help of uh, bunsen burner the heat is going to expose uh, for the heat of transfer so whatever the surface whatever the bottom of this beaker it is come in contact somehow with the burner it is directly your convection mechanism 
वॉट एवर द बीकर और द वॉल ऑफ द बीकर विच पर्जेस द हीट बैलेंस ऑफ दिस हीटिंग मोड ऑफ बंसन बर्नर इट गिवज यू द आइडिया अबाउट द कंडक्शन मेकेनिज्म एंड वॉट एवर द वेपर्स यू विल गोइंग टू फील वेन यू आर सपोज टू बी स्टैंड यूर बाय दिस हीटिंग मोड ओके सो वॉट एवर द हीट यू आर सपोज टू फील विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस रेडिएशन so this radiation mechanism which we uh, we will going to uh, understand very easily so we will going to discuss it one by one as a mechanism of your heat transfer so the mechanism of the heat transfer from one place to another takes place by three different mechanisms and all three may occur simultaneously convection conduction and radiation which is going to assign with the help of this equation that is q is equal to small m into small c into total difference there in the temperature that is delta t so we will going to discuss it by one by one so the first mechanism would be your convection one so convection is the transfer uh basically it is a process in which the heat flow in a body is achieved by the transfer of momentum of individual atoms or molecules without mixing or in other word you can say that you convection is the transfer of thermal energy by the actual motion of the medium itself and this medium in motion is usually a gas or a liquid so convection is the most important heat transfer process for liquids and the gases when will we going to focus on the example wherein the flow of heat through the metal shell of uh, a baller takes place by the conduction as far as the solid wall or shell is considered so no mixing is involved here conduction as far as the uh, convection part is concerns wherein the uh, a process wherein the heating of water by a, a hot surface or the coil type water heater is mainly by the convection method so convection is the restricted to the flow of heat in a fluid that is liquids and the gases so convection currents of a air are set up almost daily in the atmosphere so these are the responsible for the winds land and sea breezes Uh, ocean currents etc so if you could able to understand this diagram this image indicates that when you, when you were uh, as far as the fire camp is concerned or the uh, meanwhile when you are able to uh, oh, what you can say uh, the hold your hands over the fire so whatever the heat you feel by putting your hands over the flame of that uh, fire then this mechanism or the feel of that heat is nothing but your convection mechanism then conduction conduction basically a process in which the heat flow in a body is achieved by the transfer of momentum of an individual atoms or the molecules without mixing okay or conduction is the transfer of thermal energy by molecular actions without any motion of the medium and it can occurs in solids liquids and gases but it is usually most important in solids if you could able to see the image that in the presentation as far as the conduction mechanism is concerned when if you will going to hold the stick and uh, if you trying to um uh, fire that stick with the help of uh, that fire okay so whatever the heat it, it's been generated or it is simultaneously traveled from that the point of stick okay uh, towards your hand then that time whatever the heat you are supposed to feel while uh, um, while uh, holding that stick over the fire okay so that mechanism is called as conduction wherein the example is concerned so flow of heat through the metal shell 
of a boiler takes place by conduction as far as the solid wall or the shale is considered. No mixing is involved actually and the conduction is limited to solids and the fluids whose moment, uh, movement is uh, what you can say the restricted and the flow of heat depends on the transfer of vibrational energy from one molecule to another and in case of metals the movement of free electrons such that no appreciable displacement of the matters occur and the conduction in the bulk of fluids is normally overshadowed uh, by convection but it uh, assumes great importance at uh, fluid boundaries. Next one is radiation. Radiation is a transfer of uh, energy transfer process in which the heat flows through the space by means of uh, electromagnetic waves are concerned. So the mechanism of heat transfer through space by means of electromagnetic waves it's called as radiation. A very good example of radiation is the black body radiation which occurs by absorbing all energy incidents upon it at the same time the absorb energy is uh, quantitatively transferred into the heat and then another example of the radiation is based on the fused cords which transfers all the radiation striking on it while a polished opaque surface that is your mirror have a tendency to reflect most of the radiation falling on its surface. So few example you can cite here as far as radiation process is concerned that is used for producing the heat. Uh, named as FIF, solar water heaters, okay, solar cookers, uh, microwave oven, microwave cookers and sonic heater bath. In many cases this heat transfer occurs by all three of these methods simultaneously. This can be illustrated by the working of the oven in which the hot air is circulated by means of fan in order to transfer the heat by forced convection instantaneously flow of heat from the shelf uh, to the material in contact takes place by means of conduction and heat also radiates from hot walls of the oven indicating a uh, sorry uh, the radiation phenomena if you could able to see this picture okay uh, the one man is uh, what you can say holding uh, uh, his hands okay uh, next to the fire so whatever the energy or the heat transferred or the it uh, 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 he fills the uh, heat from that uh, fire the mechanism to feel that uh, heat is your uh, is due to your uh, radiation one only okay so as far as the applications of this heat transfer is concerned the in pharmaceutical engineering the heat flow is involved in various operation some of them are evaporation so in this method first that is evaporation the sufficient heat is uh, provided for the um, conversion of uh, liquid into a vapor which is uh, subsequently removed such a process is involved in the preparation of vegetable extract. Analog construction of shale and tube heat exchanger is used in the evaporation. Subsequently, energy is quantitatively transferred into heat so as to estimate the efficiency of this process. The second applications for the your distillation, wherein this method involves the transfer of heat to a liquid mixture in order to convert a liquid into vapor so that the individual components are condensed at some other places. Moreover, in steam distillation, it is found that the steam is in direct contact with the material. Third applications would be drying. So, in case of drying, the heat transfer is very important for the production of tablets by transferring the heat through a carrier gas over a bed of weight solid mass to attain drawing. It is also employed for the production of milk products as heat flows to the solutions and the suspensions. 
the fourth application would be your crystallization so heat is supplied to the saturated solution to achieve the stage of supersaturation which helps to promote the drugs crystallization whereas in case of purification of bulk drugs where the saturated solution is cool that is removal of heat to achieve the crystallization the fifth applications would be your sterilization so the technique used for the sterilization of pharmaceuticals is autoclaving it is used to sterilize the equipment by subjecting high pressure of steam as uh, a heating medium so glass apparatus and other containers are also sterilized by the mean by means of uh, heat uh, dry heat sterilization beside all the above process boiling uh, then uh, excitations sublimation fusion etc are some other process involved in the transfer of heat various equipments are used for heating or cooling purpose in a laboratory setup such as hot air ovens dryers refrigerators incubators etc whereas uh, on industrial level equipments are used to fulfill the functions of uh, heat application heat removal prevention of heat dissipation etc thus for efficient maintenance and working of equipment the fundamental principles involved in transfer of heat must be properly understood so your first mechanism is your conduction uh wherein the heat can uh, flow only when there is a temperature gradient that is heat flows from a hot surface to a cold surface in the rate of conduction through solids can be studied easily since it is the sole phenomena the basic law of heat transferred by conduction can be written in the form of rate equation as follows wherein the rate of the heat transferred is directly proportional to the driving force but inversely proportional to the resistance it would be your first equation so the driving force is the temperature drop across the solid surface the greater the surface uh, uh, greater the temperature drop the greater will be the rate of uh, heat flow so the flow of heat will also depends on the conductivity of the materials through which it is flowing example conduction of heat is faster through an iron rod than through a wooden log this factor is represented by the team resistance uh sorry term resistance which can be quantitatively expressed by the fourier's law wherein your resistance is directly proportional to the thickness of the surface which is measured in terms of meters but inversely proportional to the mean proportionality constant which is represented as w by m into k uh, multiplied by area of the surface which is measured in terms of meter square so your equation second would be capital l upon small k m multiplied by area so equation 2 for the resistance can be obtained from the fourier's law So Fourier's law states that the rate of heat flow through a uniform material is proportional to the area and the temperature drop and inversely proportional to the length of the path of flow. So the Fourier's law may be mathematically expressed as rate of heat flow is directly proportional to the area into temperature difference divided by thickness. So Uh, your equations uh, would become small q which represented as rate of heat flow uh, directly proportional to the area which is indicated as a multiplied by delta t that is your temperature difference uh, divided by your thickness which is uh, expressed in terms of l so your equations would become your small q is equal to km multiplied by a multiplied by delta t upon l so that would be your equation 3 so the deri derivation that is uh, fourier's law can be applied to the to a metal wall through which the conduction of heat is taking place so the characteristic features are area of wall is uh, measured in terms of uh, meter square that is a 
uh, thickness of the wall that is L is measured in terms of meter. Face of the wall is maintained at a uniform definite and higher temperature that is T1. If it is kept on constant then you will have to consider it. So K face of the wall is maintained at lower but uniform temperature that is T2K which is also going to be considered as a constant for the second time. So the heat flow will be at right angles to the plane A and is assumed to be in a steady state. So consider a thin section of the thickness at an intermediate point in the wall. So this section is parallel to the plane A for the section. Fourier's law may be applied as given below. So wherein your equation 4 would become dq upon d theta is equal to minus k into a into dt upon dl whereas q is your heat transfer uh, theta that is your time process k is your professionality constant t is your temperature and the constant k is a function of temperature but it independent of the heat length so the minus sign indicates the decrease in the temperature in the direction of flow. So the inequation for dt upon dl represents the temperature gradient. You should have to focus on this dt by air, uh, dt by dl because many times it is very con make uh, the students confused from where the dt and dl is uh, gonna taking place and uh, how what actually it signify. So dt by dl it signify the temperature gradient and for a steady state heat transfer the equation 4 changes to dq upon d theta as it is uh, your constant so q is equal to minus k a upon dt by dl it would be your equation 5 so if you could able to understand the heat transfer through a metal wall by the conduction mechanism then if you could able to see this diagram on exactly of your right hand side if you could able to see the term is there that is high temperature side which is represented by t1 on left hand side lower temperature t2 is there the direction of heat flow that is from c metal part is your dl by h okay and that is represented as your capital l that is thickness so the temperature difference in the intermediate section is not known but the temperature at the two faces of the wall are known. So your equation 6 become small q into dl upon a is equal to minus k into dt. So integration if you are going to take for this equation 6 between the limits. So l is equal to 0 when t is equal to t1 and when your l is equal to l that is total thickness when t is equal to t2. So, which gives the equations for the same in one uh, capital L into DL upon 0 A is equal to minus K T T upon T1 is equal to T1 into uh, K D T T2 upon uh, your Q L upon A is equal to K M uh, into T1 minus T2 which is exactly equal to the km into delta t when you are supposed to rearrange this equation same in which gives you small q is equal to km into a into delta t upon l whereas km is your mean proportionality constant w upon m into k in steady state heat transfer your q remain constant so in equation 3 the term it is quite of different one as far as the application is concerned so thermal conductivity is the reciprocal of the thermal resistance okay you should uh, focus on this that uh, thermal conductivity is the reciprocal of thermal resistance and the thermal conductivity of solid is expressed in terms of k as for the equation 3 so the coefficient of thermal conductivity is the quantity of heat that flows across a unit surface area in unit time when the temperature a drop is unity and the coefficient of the thermal conductivity depends upon the materials with which the body is made and upon its temperature next one would be your Fourier's law yes we had just now see this 
Fourier's law. So, this is nothing but the sort of uh, characteristics of this Fourier's law, it as follows. So, the single line compound wall resistance in a series, what may be you are up to now a wall has been treated as a uh, if it uh, consists of only one material walls are made up of many different materials of different thickness so we solve this more general problem by considering the compound wall so the equations would become qv1 is equal to k1 multiplied by a multiplied by dh th minus tx bracket complete into t divided by small t1 and for the q2 it is exactly the equal to the k2 small k2 into uh, a multiplied by tx minus tc bracket complete into small t upon t2 so let us assume that the uh, inside wall is the hot wall and uh, it is at uh, a temperature so th whereas the outside wall is the cold wall and uh, it is uh, at temperature tc okay so if you could able to see this diagram you you, you are uh, really getting able to understand this terminology so the temperature at the interface of the two material is unknown at this time and will be design designated by tx so the first wall has a thickness d1 and a thermal conductivity k1 whereas wall 2 has a thickness d2 and a thermal conductivity k2 the film coefficient is uh, very important as far as the aspect of uh, you know, heat transfer is concerned. So the film coefficient or the film formation which takes place uh, in fluids which having thin and transparent blades, the resistance of this film is quite large. So the thickness of thermal resistance of fluid films cannot be uh, easily determined velocity viscosity and you can say turbulence are uh, the parameters on which the thickness of this film generally depends on since the resistance of this film are not uh, computed individually the indirect method of calculation of film coefficients has been preferred so the film coefficient is uh, refers to a number expressing the amount of heat which passing through unit area of the film for unit drop in the temperature it's called as film coefficient the quantity of heat flow through a film is proportional to the area of the film and temperature difference across the film and your equations become h is equal to q h divided by temperature difference so q is your heat flux that is thermal power per unit area q is uh, equal to your dq by da into h that is uh, heat transfer coefficient delta t is your difference in the temperature between the solid surface and surrounding fluid area that is k okay Stephen Boltzmann equation or the law so the thermal energy radiated by a black body radiators per second per unit area is proportional to the fourth power of the absolute temperature and is given by capital P upon capital A which is exactly equal to the Sigma multi uh, uh, into multiplied by T raised to the power 4 okay which is uh, measured in terms of joules per meters meter square into second so sigma will have to consider here 5.603 multiplied by 20 raised to minus 8 which is expressed in terms of watt per meter square into k raised to the power 4 so we'll see here the sum of the uh, heat uh, heaters that is your uh, heat exchangers and your heat uh, uh, interchangers okay so basically the uh, we will going to focus on the introduction of the equipment for the uh, which is usually 
applicable for the heat transfer so there are the two types of the equipments are suitably used for the heat transfer one is your heat exchanger uh, and another is your heat uh, interchangers so heat exchangers are uh, the devices uh, are used for transferring the heat from one fluid that is hot gas or steam to another liquid through a metal wall it's called as heat exchangers whereas heat interchangers are the devices which are used for transferring the heat from one liquid to another liquid or from one gas to another gas through a metal wall it is called as heat interchangers so we will going to discuss it one by one what actually the heat exchangers are so equipment used to exchange the thermal energy between the solid and liquid uh, of uh, different temperature is known as heat exchanger for example uh, heat transfer between solid surface and a fluid or heat transfers between solid and a liquid so heat exchangers are extensively used uh, for the different types of the process that means uh, your heating or cooling of fluid stream evaporation or condensation of single or multi component fluid stream then recovering or injecting of heat then sterilizing um, pasteurizing fractionating concentrating and crystallizing and controlling of uh, your process fluid so the sum heat transfer or uh, the heaters equipments are tabular heaters which is also called as shell and tube heater second would be your multi pass heater and third would be your two pass floating heat head heater so these are the example of your heat exchangers so we'll going to discuss it one by one tubular heaters or the heat exchangers is also called as shell and tube heater it is simplest form of the heater it is single pass tubular heater as far as the construction of these uh, tubular heaters it's concerned it consists of basically the bundle of parallel tubes relatively thin wall ends of the tubes are expanded into the two sheets so the bundle of the tubes are enclosed in a cylindrical shell two distribution chambers are provided at each end fluid inlet is provided to left distribution chamber heated fluid outlet is provided to right distribution chamber steam is provided by connections non condensate vapor escape through vent and condensate vapor drains at the bottom so if you could able to see this diagram of uh, straight tube heat exchanger or you can say one pass tube uh, side so if you could able to understand the labeling condition of it as far as the can uh, construction of this uh, shell and tube heat exchanger is concerned so on your exactly right hand side uh, there is a one outlet and uh, uh, two inlets are there that is on the top of your right hand side the shell side fluid in is there then tube sheet is uh, going to hold at one end of uh, right side uh, on exactly on that side only the tube side fluid out is there that is outlet plenum uh in between the uh, baffles have attached any uh, at bottom as well as on uh, on the upper surface of the tube okay uh, if you could able to see these blue lines that is nothing but your flow of heat uh, on exactly left hand side uh, similarly as like your right hand side the tube sheet is there then inlet is there okay and outlet is there for the shell side fluid out okay so we'll going to see and focus on how the construction workings are uh, work so we'll see the working here so the steam is introduced and uh, uh, it flows down the tubes in this process the tubes get heated and the condensate vapors drained non condensate gases escape through vent and the fluid uh, to be heated is pumped into the left distribution chamber the fluid flows through the tube and steam fluid uh, uh, and fluid are separated physically and the total heat uh, transferred is affected by the single pass of the fluid and the last would be your thus the fluid reaches the uh, right distribution chamber and leaves through the exit point so this is all about the heat 
exchanger or the tubular heaters as far as the advantage of this uh, shell and tube heat exchanger is concerned it can be handle a uh, heavy duty and high temperature and pressure large heating surface can be packed into the small volume as far as the demerits of this uh, tubular heater is concerned it requires a large space for the installation velocity of the fluid is low because of the large cross section area and due to the high temperature loosening and leakage may take place and obviously the its maintenance cost is uh, sort of more next will be your multi pass multi pass heaters so in a multi pass heater the velocity of uh, fluid can be increased as a result a uh, heat transfer coefficient also increases as the name indicates the liquid to be heated is passed through the tube several times before leaving the equipment this facilitates the heat transfer therefore the multi pass tubular heaters are superior to the single pass shell and tube heaters as far as the construction of the multi pass heater is concerned the construction of multi pass heater is uh, same as uh, the tubular heater okay which is uh, we have just now seen however with some modification okay so tubular multi pass uh, heaters which basically consist of a bundle of parallel tubes and uh, and the end of these tubes are expanded into the two a uh, tube sheet so the tubes bundle is uh, wrapped in a cylindrical casing two distribution chambers are provided at each end of the casing since the heater is multi pass the same liquid has to flow through several tubes back and forth in order to facilitate this process distribution chambers are partitioned by means of baffles and their arrangements are different in the two chambers so the entrance and the exit points of the fluid are arranged in the same distribution chambers right side if you could able to see there in the diagram okay so you will going to observe the right side and the left side distribution chamber okay so we will see this explanation there in the working so steam is uh, introduced through the connection into the space surrounding the tubes as the steam flows down the tubes get heated and the condensed vapor is drained non condensable gases if any which escapes through the drain provided at the top of the casing the fluid to be heated is pumped at a high velocity into the right distribution chamber through the compartment a and high velocity facilitate the effective heat transfer in this construction the fluid is directed to enter only the fraction of the tubes by means of baffles which placed in the distribution chamber and the liquid enters compartment a and flows to the left into the compartment b back to the right to compartment and Uh, so on in the same sequence of alphabetical order during this process fluid in the tubes get heated due to heat transferred by conduction through the metal wall followed by a stagnant layer and finally by convection mechanism the net result is enhanced rate of heat transfer thus the fluid passes back and forth through the several tubes and then leaves the equipment if the fluid is to be introduced at high velocity the pumping should be effective which increases the cost of power through the cost of heater is low too low velocity saves power for pumping but needs a large very large heater therefore a balance approach should be work out based on the economy
as far as the advantages of this uh, multi pass heater is uh, concerned the multi pass uh, construction decreases the cross section of the fluid path thereby increases the fluid velocity thus multi pass tubular heaters are superior to the single pass shale and tube heaters as far as the disadvantage is concerned the fabrication of multi pass heater is uh, more uh, complicated and the pressure drop through the apparatus uh, is increased because of uh, enhanced velocity of the fluid flow and third disadvantage would be more number of exit and uh, entrance points increases the friction losses this increases the cost of uh, pumping fluids next would be your floating heat head two pass heater the floating head two pass heaters the ends of the tubes are structurally independent of the shell so the construction is the same as tubular heater with some modification so two pass floating head heater consists of a bundle of parallel tubes these are enclosed in a shell that is casing the right side of the distribution chamber is partition and fluid inlet and outlet are connected to the same chamber the partition is uh, such that uh, both have equal number of the tubes on left side the distribution chamber is not connected to the casing it is structurally independent which is known as floating head and the other ends of the tube is embedded into the floating head so steam or the other vapor is uh, introduced through inlet which provided to the shell and the provisions are made for the skip of uh, non condensed uh, vapor and an exit for the condensate if we could able to see this diagram okay uh, level number 1 2 3 depicted in the figure which represents as number 1 baffles in the two passes level number 2 that is baffles in the shell pass and uh, level number 3 it is uh, your floating head so we will see the working in detail as the steam flows down the tubes they get heated the condensed condensed vapor escape through the bottom of the shell non condensable gases if any which escape through the vent at the top of the shell so the fluid to be heated is introduced into the distribution chamber on uh, right side of the heater the fluid flows through few tubes present in changes directions now it passes back to the next part of the partition chamber on right side therefore the fluid flows twice through the tubes that is to pass during this process fluid in the tubes get heated due to heat transferred by conduction through the metal wall followed by a stagnant layer and finally by the convection then the fluid leaves the outlet provided in the shell the advantage of this floating tube floating head to pass heater in a shell and tube heat exchanger tubes and the shells may get expanded due to the difference in the temperature similarly the contraction are also possible when heater is switched off there in the floating head it leads to loosening of a uh, tube sheets or buckles the tubes the therefore the constructing the tubes independent of the shell can prevent these effects such as array such a arrangement such an uh, arrangement is uh, called as your floating head next we'll discuss the heat interchanges basically we have seen this uh, what actually the heat interchangers are the heat in interchangers are uh, used for the heat transfer from one from one liquid to another or from one gas to another gas through a metal wall in heat interchangers the heating medium is a hot liquid the liquid to be heated is the cold liquid in this case the film coefficients both 
outside and inside the tubes are nearly uh, uh, of uh, same magnitude. So the value of the overall heat transfer coefficient that is u will be near that of the smaller of the two film coefficient. Hence, heat transfer is not efficient here. So the film coefficient can be enhanced by increasing the velocity of flow from the point of construction. It is difficult to increase the velocity of the whole fluid outside the tubes. However, the surface area of the contact can be increased by introducing the baffles in the construction. So the increased surface area of the contact enhances the coefficient. Thus, the rate of heat transfer is enhanced. This principle are illustrated using the different heat interchanges. So we will going to discuss it one by one. So the baffles, basically this baffle consists of circular disc of sheet metal with uh, one side cut away. These are perforated to receive the tubes. To minimize the leakage, the clearance between the baffles, shell and the tubes should be small. And the baffles are supported by one or more guide rods which are fastened between the tube sheets by set screws. So if you could able to see this diagram then you will come to know the side section or the side views of the baffle. So this is useful for the mercury cleaning station. Uh, this is uh, the plastic uh, baffle placement. So if you could able to see this uh, diagram then you will come to know the front and back side where you could able to see the <coughs> long and uh, short baffles okay so wherein uh, steel created that at the top and between the short uh, baffle and the long baffle the two point is got attached with the aluminum clips working baffles are placed outside the tubes these uh, increase the velocity of the liquid outside the tubes. Baffles make the liquid flow more or less right angles to the tubes which creates the more turbulence. Uh, this helps in reducing the resistance to the heat transferred outside the tubes. Therefore, the baffles constitute an important part in the heat transfer. The construction of a liquid to liquid heat interchangers illustrates the principle of introducing the baffles into the equipment. So first of all, we will going to focus on liquid to liquid interchangers. So the heat transfer equipment has almost similar construction and working with uh, the few modification as the only difference. So we are going to focus on the construction of liquid to liquid interchangers. Normally the tube sheets, spacer rods and baffles are assembled first and then tubes are installed. The most important parts in the construction of the heat interchangers are the baffles. Second uh, point would be appropriate size of the tube sheets is chosen for the fabrication. One or more guide rods are fixed to the tube sheets by means of set screws. Baffles are placed at appropriate places using guide rods. The baffles are arranged with the appropriate spacing using the short sections of the same tubing. Baffles have perforations through which the tubes are inserted and the ends of the tubes are expanded into the tube sheets. So the above assembly is enclosed in a shell. The shell has a provision for the introducing the heating medium hot fluid. The outlet for the fluid is at right side top. On each side of the tubes, two distribution chambers are provided. Left side chamber contains an inlet for fluid to be heated and the outlet for the tube, uh, sorry, uh, for the hot fluid that is uh, heated 
is provided at the center of the right side distribution chamber. This is the diagram for the liquid to liquid heat interchanges. Uh, you will have to learn your construction and working while looking towards this figure. Then and then only you are going to be able to understand the construction and working of liquid to liquid heat interchanges. We will see the working of this. The hot fluid that is heating medium is pumped from the left side top of the shell. Okay, so uh, the fluid flows outside the uh, toggles and moves down directly to the bottom. Then it changes the direction and rises again. This process is uh, continued till it leaves the heaters. Baffles increases the velocity of the liquid outside the tubes and the baffles also allows the fluid to flow more or less right angles to the tube which creates more turbulence. This helps in reducing the resistance to heat transfer outside the tubes. Uh, then uh, baffles lengthen the path and decreases the cross section of the path of the cold fluid. The path of the uh, travel is as shown in this figure. So the baffles get heated and uh, provide the greater surface area for the heat transfer simultaneously during the flow the tubes also get heated. As a result, the film coefficient inside the tube also get increases and the liquid to be heated is pumped through the inlet provided on the left side distribution chamber. The liquid passes through the tubes and gets heated. The flow of liquid is single pass and the heated liquid is collected from the right hand side distribution chamber. As far as the advantages of this liquid to liquid uh, heat interchangers are concerned. The first advantage of this liquid to liquid heat interchangers is it provides a rapid uh, heat transfer because the liquid which flows at high velocity outside the tubes and second would be flows uh, at uh, right angles to the uh, tubes. Okay, so this is all about the advantages of uh, liquid to li liquid heat interchanges. Next device is your double pipe heat interchanges. Uh, in liquid to liquid heat uh, interchanges, the flow of cold liquid to be heated it's passed only once through the tubes before it gets discharged that is single pass the heat transfer in this case is not efficient when the few tubes per pass is desirable double pipe heat interchanger is employed we'll see the construction for these double pipe heat in interchangers so we will see the diagram for that uh, double pipe heat interchangers to understand the construction of uh, it. Uh, in this, uh, the two pipes are used, one is inserted in the other. The inside pipe or the tube is used for the pumping of cold liquid to be heated. So the outer acts as a jacket for the circulation of the hot liquid and all jacket sections are interconnected. Normally, the number of pipe section is few. Uh, the length of the pipe is also less if you could able to see this uh, diagram where in the glass tube standard iron pipe and the graphite constructions are quite of available one. Standard uh, metal pipes are assembled with the standard return bends. A proper number of the such pipes are connected in parallel and stacked vertically. So the pipe may have the longitudinal uh, fence on its outer surface. Okay, so we'll see the working mechanism of uh, these uh, 
डबल पाइप हीट इंटरचेंजर दी हॉट लिक्विड इज अ पंप ओके टू टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस वर्किंग वी शुड ऑल्सो कम टू नो बाई लुकिंग टूवर्ड्स दिस इमेज ओके सो दी हॉट लिक्विड दैट इज हीटिंग मीडियम इज पंप इन टू दी जैकेटेड सेक्शन दी हॉट फ्लूड इज सर्कुलेटेड थ्रू दी एन्यूल स्पेसिस बिटवीन दी टेम between them and carried from one sections to the next sections finally it leaves the jacket in this process the pipes get heated while the hot fluid losses its temperature the liquid to be heated is pumped through the inlet provided at right side so the liquid get uh, gets heated up and flow through the uh, bent tubes into the next section of the pipe the liquid further gets heated and the same liquid continues to flow and finally leaves the interchanges through the exit point on the right side uh as far as the uses of uh, this double pipe uh, heat interchanger is concerned it is used when uh, 0.9 to 1.4 meter square surface is uh, uh uh required okay these are the some parts which are going to used as per as different types of the heat interchangers are concerned so if you could able to see this diagram then circular type spiral type axial type and plate type of the hood rod has been used widely for the efficient working of the heat interchangers uh the another example for these interchangers are scrap surface heat exchangers okay so we will only going to focus on this uh, principle of scrap surface heat uh exchangers okay so i haven't uh, uh, made it possible to uh, uh to sum up the uh, fourth uh, exchanger that is scrap surface heat exchanger so we will only going to focus on the principle only okay so in this type of liquid liquid heat exchangers a spring loaded scraper blade is included for enhancing the overall heat transfer coefficients the scraper blade rotates at a certain speed and the scrap the inside liquid surface layer of the inner tube which is otherwise stagnant so this uh, uh, permits the replacement of uh, existing liquid layers by a new portion of liquid thus exchange of the heat is effective okay so this is all about the uh, heat interchangers and uh, heat exchangers okay so we will see first of all the uh, heat insulators and all okay so basically this uh, uh, heat insulation uh there is a distribution of uh, steam through the pipe can be reduced using uh, heat insulators the pipes should be lagged that is uh, covered with a layer of porous poor conducting materials such as kesselgar asbestos and glass wool the next point for the heat insulations would be alternatively the several layers of uh, aluminum foil can be applied for effective insulation the surface of the foil prevents the radiation losses okay so this is all about the total uh, heat transferred as detail chapter okay uh, so we will see the summary in short for this heat transfer so the heat flow is a unit process and used in unit operation such as uh, evaporation distillation drying crystallization and sterilization the principle of thermodynamics are applied to the 
to explain the flow of heat that enters or leaves the uh, system whether the system undergoes a physical transformation or a chemical reaction the flow of heat occurs from a hot fluid that is steam heat sources uh, to a cold fluid that is the place to interest this process is achieved at uh, an industrial scale so heat flow by different mechanism that is conduction through metal shell of the boiler convection that is mixing of warmer portion and cooler portion as in boiling and radiation by means of electromagnetic waves that is solar water heater through these mechanisms which are going to describe separately several of these uh, uh, operate simultaneously so uh, most of the uh, chemical and pharmaceutical industries employ a variety of heat transfer equipment uh, in the working the heating medium is not fluid that is condensed steam and other side the material is present liquid gases or solids based on the working the two type of the equipments are referred heat exchangers and the heat interchangers we had seen just now the heaters that is uh, your heat exchangers are tubular heater multipass heaters and floating head heater in this the heat transfer becomes less hence the efficiency is improved by passing the liquid at a high velocity these are useful because of the high values of steam film coefficient uh, then heat interchangers are liquid to liquid interchangers and double pipe heat interchangers and scrapped film heater in heat interchangers the heat transfer is from a hot liquid to a cold liquid or a hot gas to a cold gas through metal wall the heat transfer is not efficient but velocity can be increased which is quite of difficult one hence the surface area of conduct contact is uh, uh, increased and baffles are placed on the uh, tubes okay so froth uh, if any is removed by adding antiforming agents thus uh, the heat flows become effective to the uh, equipment so thank you very much uh, next we will going to uh, focus on our next chapter that is chapter number five uh, evaporation okay thank you have a nice day